Alright, so what is up guys? In this Kotlin tutorial, I'm going to be going over what classes and objects are and how to use them and how they simplify programming in object-oriented programming. So let's get started immediately. Right here, as you can see, it doesn't look like much code, but we'll just jump into it. I'm going to click on play. And as you can see, it says brum, 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 brum. the engine of your BMW is now running, but the car is parked. And now we start driving at 20 kilometers an hour and then at 80 kilometers an hour, and then we try to turn off the engine, but it tells us not to do that because we're driving. And then we park our car and it says we are attempting to turn off the engine and we have successfully turned off that engine. Now you may be wondering how did all of this turn into all of this? To get started, I created an object of car, which was the class over here. I'll show you right after what it is. And here it would insert the car type. So that is how we started off the program. And then using this car value, we can actually call all of the functions that we have defined inside our car class. And what do I mean by that? Now let's go to our car class. Let's just close this window over here. As you can see, we have a class called car with a car brand as a parameter or as the constructor and we have functions such as start engine, such as drive and such as turn off engine. And we can call each one of those functions in our main function just by appending to it the function to the value of car that we have instantiated here and adding the arguments that are required. So this can simplify a lot of things when it comes to having a nice code structure. But uh, since this is a lot of code to just explain, I'm going to start this whole project from scratch. And the first thing we are going to want to do in our new project is create a new class. And to do that, we'll go to source, we will right click and we will click on kotlinfile.class. And inside here, we're going to write car. And that's going to create a class of car. And a class is just a blueprint. That's the most common explanation you will get for a class. It's just a blueprint. It doesn't do anything. It just holds all the data and logic for what it should do. So if you were building a building, this would be the blueprint and the bricks and all the structures would be the actual object. And the first thing we want to do here actually is add a constructor. And we will talk about constructors in a future video, but for now just copy this. So we'll do car brand, and that's going to be of type string. Then inside here, we're gonna create a few variables. So the first one's gonna be private var is turned on, and this is going to be applicable to the engine. And we're gonna set that to false because your car should be turned off by the time you find it, preferably. And now we're gonna write var speeds and initialize it with the value of zero. And finally, var brand, which is going to be the car brand we passed into the constructor. Now, the first function we want to create is going to be a function called start engine. And this is so we can actually turn on our car. And just for now, I'm going to add these two slashes and write to do. And this is a cool keyword you can use in case you don't want to put in the logic yet, but, but you still know what functions you are going to need and what kind of logic you are going to need for the project. Now we're going to write function drive, and that's going to take speed as a parameter of type int. And we'll write to do here as well. And finally, we'll go down and write function turn off engine. And we will write to do here. And so far as you can see, this is the basic functionality I used to create the previous program. And this is all the car needs to know how to do for this car to function. And I'm not going to go and type in all the logic I wrote earlier, but I will just add some very basic statements so you guys can see how it works and we can keep this tutorial short and simple. So the first thing we want to do is add a print line statement to the start engine. So we'll do print line or whatever sound your car makes when it starts up. So I just put in random letters like that. And that is the first thing that's going to happen when you start the engine. And then down here, we're going to write thread dot sleep to give this program a fake uh, delay between statements so we can read it in a nice order and it doesn't just pop up all the information at once. So we'll do thread sleep one second and we will print line your brand is now turned on. So when we print this, it'll say your brand. And if you put BMW or Mercedes, it will say your Mercedes or your BMW or whatever car you decide to put in there. It will put that car there and it will tell you that the car turned on. And then we'll write thread sleep after that as well and give it another second delay. And that's all we're going to do for the start engine logic. Then we're going to go to drive. And of course, we need to write if is turned on, then we can write all the logic we need because we want to make sure that the engine is turned on 
when we drive the car, or else it is a very efficient car that works on magic. And just to simplify this, I'm gonna write only one statement in here, and that's gonna be, if speed is more than zero, we will print line car is driving. And then we're gonna add an else statement here, and it's going to just tell you that if we are not moving, the car will be parked, so car is parked. And then we should add another else statement out here for the if the engine is turned on, and if it is not turned on, it's going to print line cannot drive car with the engine turned off. And that's a very simple drive function. And finally, in our turn off engine function, we're going to write if is turned on, then we're going to write should equal false. And we will print line engine turned off successfully. And we need to add that parentheses at the end. Else we will write your engine is already turned off. And those are the basic functions we are going to need for this very basic app. So let's go back to our main function. And the first thing we have to do here to be able to use this class that we just created is instantiated. So we can use it in this project. So the first thing we're gonna do here is create a value of car and that's going to equal car. And we have to add a car brand to the constructor. So we're just gonna do BMW again. And then down here, we can finally call those functions that we had in the class. And this saves us time and is just very efficient for bigger projects. So we can do car, dot start engine and then we'll do car dot drive at the speed of 10 and then we'll do car dot drive and put it at zero and finally we will do car dot turn off engine and if we play this program we'll make our funny noise it will start the car and it will tell us we cannot drive the car with the engine turned off that is because we forgot a very crucial point in the start engine and that is to set is turned on to true and now if we go back to main and we click on play You'll see brum, 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 brum. your car is now turned on, car is driving, car is parked, and finally your engine is turned off successfully. So using classes and objects definitely helps you clean up your project by a lot and can be very efficient. And this was the very basic concept behind how you can use objects and classes. And in the next video, I'm gonna be going over constructors and how to use them with classes. Just keep in mind that this was a constructor and I will go much further into detail on how to add more constructors, initializers, and just why they are nice to use in many situations. But for this video, that's all I wanted to cover. Thanks for watching and I will see you guys later.